Kimberly Adams and I am your host of the Daughters of Zion. The Daughters of Zion is nestled in the beautiful sanctuary of Jesus People Church at 4400 Hickory Hill Road. We have an awesome show for you this evening, but before we get started, I'd like to introduce to you our distinguished guests. First on my close right will be Sister Cornita Dawson. Hi, good. thank you for having me. And next on my awesome left will be Sister Angela Jones. Hi. Welcome ladies. Well, thank you. Tonight we're going to be doing a series, so to speak, on the women in the lineage of Jesus Christ. And tonight we're just going to talk about two awesome women. It will be Ruth and Tamar. Both have been a prominent source of who God is and who Jesus is and bringing up an awesome son of God. We're going to start off, ladies, with the book of Ruth. And I'm going to have you speak first, Sister Cornita. Tell us one thing about Ruth that always sticks out to you, something that always makes you realize the type of woman of God she was and how important it is that we kind of pattern so much of ourselves behind her. Okay. One thing that sticks out to me is how Ruth portrays faithfulness. Mm -hmm. How, I mean, she stood by her word of being faithful to her mother-in-law, Naomi. Yes. And the, the one thing that she said that blew my mind, she said, I'm not going anywhere because Naomi told her and Ophir y'all can go on y'all's way because I don't have any more sons for you. And she said, well, and, uh, Oprah said, okay, bye. And, and, and Ruth like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> she said, wherever you go, I'm going to go. She said, whoever, whatever God you serve, I'm going to serve. Okay. Because every, reading the Bible, you will find out that Ruth was not uh, affiliated with serving God. She come from the Moabites, mm -hmm. which did not serve God. Yeah. And so for her to turn around and say, I'm going to believe in who you believe in. I'm going to travel with you wherever you go. I'm going to lay my head wherever you go. I'm in this. I'm in this to be with you to the end. And it's just something that stood out to me because throughout the Bible reading that, uh, reading that uh, chapter, you find out that she did just that. And not only did she do that, she took wisdom. She took the wisdom that her mother-in-law offered her. And, and reading the story, it was such a uh, happily ever after ending, so it just blows my mind. So her faithfulness is one thing that stood out for me. And that was awesome that you mentioned that because one thing we know about Christ and being a Christian is the need to be faithful yes. and the, she being one of the cornerstones of faithfulness shows us that even though you may not have started at a certain point or a certain position once you understand that if you're faithful to something yes. then you can be able to grow within that right. and thank God she was as faithful as she was because it opened the door for her to get that great Boaz that came along and saw how she continued to work and you know nowadays Sister Angela I'm going to have you speak to this you know everybody wants that Boaz. Yes, Everybody, yes. ooh, I want my Boaz, my Boaz. <laughs> you know, every Friday we read one book of the Bible ooh, for Boaz. Right. Talk about the fact that we, before you can even get your Boaz, you got to be kind of faithful in something mm -hmm. and not be all over the place because yes. we have a tendency to change our mind like we change our clothes. Yes. So let's talk to this generation and explain to them the need to be faithful mm -hmm. and to understand that faithfulness will take you so much further than just chasing after the next best thing. Oh, wow. That's an <laughs> amazing point. But yeah, first of all, you got to have God in your life, you know. That's right. In any way, I mean, like, and women, we're not supposed to go looking for the Boaz. A lot of women, I've seen where women are proposing to men and mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I'm mm -hmm. like, that is not how it's to be. But being faithful to something, and then you have to love yourself first, too. All right. Mm -hmm. So you have to love yourself first, because if you can't love yourself first and be faithful in things that you do in your own life, you can't love and be faithful to another person. Mm -hmm. And this goes like, kind of like with teaching your children. Because my kids tend to think that 
because I may treat them one way because I'm watching your actions. Mm-hmm. When your actions don't show me, you say you're responsible, you say you're faithful, you say you're going to do this, All right. but the actions don't prove it. Her actions proved it. All right. Her actions showed she was faithful. She didn't go to the left, she didn't go to the right, she yes. stayed with the yes. lady. Yes. And because of her faithfulness, she was rewarded for it. Yes. You know, she wasn't looking for self. Come I'm on. trying to help you All because right. I'm with you. I'm going to mm-hmm. I'm gonna stay with you through thick and through thin. Yes. And a lot of people tend to overlook the part about being with someone through thick and through thin. Yes. When you take those vows, those are serious vows. When it says, till death do us part, right. that is to be the only reason mm-hmm. that we split up. But mm-hmm. see, you got to have God in it. If you don't have God in it, mm-hmm. it's not going to work properly mm-hmm. anyway. All right. Yes. He opened some doors right there. <laughs> but one thing I do want to touch on is the fact that you did preface everything with the spirit of love. And we have to recognize, if, we, if we're going to talk about Jesus and his line and his lineage, the fact that God gave us his son out of the love that he has for us. Mm-hmm. And his son represents that love. Yes. And one thing about Na- uh, sorry, one thing about Ruth, that she loved Naomi. And mm-hmm. There's no way you hanging out with somebody That's you right. don't love. There's That's no right. way you sticking That's with right. her, you want to work with her, you want to stay with her no yes. matter what. Sister Cornita, talk mm-hmm. about how the spirit of love have to come within us mm-hmm. and self-love that Sister mm-hmm. Angela spoke about. Okay. How important that is that we have love for ourselves, Mm -hmm. love for Christ, and Mm -hmm. then we can see and find ourselves being faithful to something other than our own desires, because we can be real selfish at times. Talk about selfless love. Selfless love. First of all, um, if you don't know how to define it, you you open that Bible and that word will teach you. The word will teach you how to come out of this envy, uh, enviness, uh, jealousy, strife. The word of God would would bring correction. The word of God would take you to levels that you ain't never been. So my first advice would be to open up that word and get started on wherever the Lord sent you to. And not only just read it, not just read it and just let it stay in the Bible, but practice it. Amen. Practice that self-love. That's one thing that uh, when I talked earlier about how Ruth was faithful, Naomi had to show some love. Amen. There was some love there for her to want to be able to stay with her and go with her. It was some kind of love that pulled her, and she loved that. That brought her to where, well, you know, if you've been doing it for me, and you were doing it for me when I was married to your son, I can show you, I can give give you back this love and and having that kind of love the way God wants us to have you can't go wrong Amen. you can't go wrong you love it on somebody that you know don't mean you no good you still treating them kind you what, what you going to get out of it when you decide to take uh, revenge what what we get out of it we don't get nothing out of it Amen. most of the time we mad we angry at ourselves and when the holy spirit kick in he going to let you know you wrong you need to straighten that up so as you begin to live and practice and continue to uh, learn how to love and learn how to be self-righteous and, and loving someone else and, and love comes all kinds of ways. Love comes with a smile. Love comes with just a good morning. Love comes with just a good night. Love comes with hugs. Love comes with giving. So I just thank God that uh, we can be able to open his word and be able to grow in his word, be able to learn. We don't have to ask man, you just open that Bible up and I promise you it's some kind of story in there that's going to be able to help you understand what it is that you need to know. That is awesome. You, you, you made such a great point because mm-hmm. everything we go through has been done already in the Bible. Amen. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. Even when you get down to the nitty gritty of it, it because it's always those things, those mm-hmm. overlays. I'm, there's been drugs as long as there's been people. All right. You know, there's been situations where people have gotten drugs drunk or over mm-hmm. indulging things as long as there has been life. Yes. So we have to recognize that anything we need is mm-hmm. already in the instruction manual. And Sister uh, Angela, I want you to speak a little bit about the fact that Sister Cornelia talked about love and how we have to have, understand that love will allow us to, to break down the spirit of envy and jealousy and strife and how that spirit has overcome so many in this generation. Yes. Yes. Times are really diff- 
different right now, yeah. more so than we've ever seen. And we see the world running away from God, and that's what God is trying to show them. The further you go away from me, the more I'm going to bring strife into this. I'm going to allow my hand to be removed. You're going to see people upset and jealous. How do we, and what would you say to bring more people into the body of Christ? Because they take it one step by just watching us this yes. evening. Right. So what can we do to draw them in and say, hey, this is where you need to be. This is where you learn how to be faithful like a woman of God, like Ruth. Like Ruth. What do we need to do? Even though you may have been a Moabitess, you may not have been one who believed mm -hmm. and walked in the same God. Mm -hmm. What can we do to bring people to war Christ right now? Thank you, Lord. Wow, that is mm -hmm. one question. Like, I think what we can do right now to draw more people into Christ it's just to pray for them because I can't really see anything in particular that will draw someone because see, you have to have wisdom and you know you get wisdom you have to have a fear of God a lot of people ain't scared of nothing yes. let them tell it you All know right. so if you gotta first have that fear and mm -hmm. and when you think about it those who may not believe or they have their own different type of God at some point in time everybody has called the name Jesus All right. or everybody has called the name God I don't care if you All just right. said Oh my God, or <laughs> OMG, you know, you, you've called his name at some particular point. And you have to ask yourself, like, why would I call his name if I didn't believe him? Yes. Because you have to remember, when, when the, we came over, once he, the flood went over, you're at ease in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to dig deeper and find out more about him. Oh, wow. No man on this earth can say mm -hmm. that he doesn't know who Jesus is mm -hmm. because he's in our hearts. He's right. embedded in us, mm -hmm. you know, but we have to search and seek mm -hmm. after him, you know, and as far as this, con this strife and envy and stuff like mm -hmm. this, what God has for you is for you. All right. Everybody can't do the same thing. We, we, this world would not function if everybody were managers or if everybody were supervisors. We need somebody to be the, the, the employee. We need a supervisor. We need a CEO. We need a CFO. We need the janitor. We need the cook. We need the mate. We need everybody. So everybody has a particular part to play. So when you first love yourself, you won't be envious of anybody else because you know she do this really good, but that might not be for me. That's it. You know, I might need to do something else. And if you don't know what it is you should be doing, then you pray on it. That's right. You know, and that's when you can come into the church. You come in for prayer because we have prayer every day. You know, you come in, you come in for prayer, but the first step is the fear of God, and then you got to open up that Bible. Thank you, Lord. The fear of God, and that's Thank what happens, Lord. and we're, we're seeing now that there's no fear of God. We got fear of everything else, yes. or we act like we yes. have no fear at all. Yes. Right. But if you feared God, or mm -hmm. if man and people, everyone, man, woman, boy, girl, actually had a fear that if I continue down this road, it's not going to be good for me. Mm -hmm. My life will end when, when I die. Mm -hmm. And Sister Cornita, talk mm -hmm. about the fact about everlasting life mm -hmm. and how important it is that we continue to walk in the spirit of love and the spirit of mm -hmm. faithfulness while we have this time on earth mm -hmm. because that's what brought, that's what God created when he created his son to show us that we can do this. Mm -hmm. And she, he made sure that we have the commandments that tells us to honor our mother and father. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that Ruth did. Mm -hmm. She made sure she honored Naomi by mm -hmm. making sure she continued to lift her up. So I know I gave you multiple questions in that question. <laughs> so my question really is, tell us about how important it is to be honorable to okay. God and to continue to have fear in me and fear and reverence to okay. God and how important that is. Yes. As a Christian believer, um, the way I would give an answer to that, how important is it that you want God to bless you? Amen. How important is it? I tell people, I've had people ask me, well, uh, how much do you tithe? Do you tithe the whole, from your whole check? Or do you tithe from what you bring home? And, and, and me growing in Christ and learning how to tithe, I told them I tithe from whatever the whole thing is because I want my blessings from God to be that whole thing. I don't want to bring, give him that 10% of what I bring home 
and it cutting off some of the blessings I got. So I tied from whatever the whole, because we, that one thing that we don't understand that the whole thing belongs to him anyway. Amen. I mean, there's nothing on this earth that belongs to us. No Amen. matter how we get these big houses and big cars, when we get ready to go, we can't take it with us. Right. So everything belongs to him. And once you get that embedded in you and start to begin to understand that, hey, he's giving me stuff that I don't even deserve. Oh he's doing things for me that I know I don't deserve. We all have all these skeletons in our closet yeah. and some of us can't open those closets. They got to stay closed yeah. in order to the blood of Jesus yeah. keep yeah. those closets, doors closed. Oh, yeah. Don't open them doors because when you open them doors, you owe him way more than $40. Right. You owe him way more than $100 oh, out of right. your check. So we going to keep those doors closed and we going to continue to grow in the Lord so that he can come for us and our wrongdoings and our trying to get it right. So I just thank God the, the, to help answer that question, Sister Adams. I give God what I want him to give. When I'm slacking, I notice he slacks. Amen. When I start giving God whole, God gives me whole. And well, the one thing that he does that I don't do, regardless of how I treat, regardless of how I pray, regardless of how I, I love, God still is different. He still still loves me in spite. He Amen. still loves us in spite of when we do wrong. Even when we fall, he's still there. So the one thing that I do is try to at least do what I know to do is to stay, get back up, stay in this word, to stay growing and stay uh, witnessing about the things that God is doing for me. Oh my goodness. And that's so awesome that you said mm -hmm. if I, and you know what it is, it, the spirit of reaping and sowing. Yes, if yes. you reap, if you sow All certain right. things, things you will get back. Yes. That's awesome. If I sow certain things, I will reap what I sow. And you said that about God. If I sow unto God, if I give unto God, God going to give me back what yes. I give unto him. Amen. People don't recognize that. Mm. And I don't want us to, to move out because remember, mm. we got two women in these Bibles. Yes, we, we talk about. Right. And we're going to talk about a little bit about Tamar. All now. Right. now, Tamar's situation was a little <laughs> bit different. Tamar was a loving woman of God. All she right. was loving. And she got caught up with a crazy brother mm. that decided that mm. he wanted to pull her Jesus. in and do some things to her mm. that he shouldn't have done. And all of us as women have gone mm. through some mm. things that we wish we didn't have mm. to go through in our yes, past. Lord. Tell us, Sister Angela, I want you to speak to this. <laughs> Tell us how do we get to the point of accepting what has happened yes. but being able to move on. Not saying that we're minimalizing what has gone on in our lives, mm. but we're able to build from it. Talk about that a bit. Yes. Wow. And that's awesome that you bring that up because as old as I am, I um, have had a situation similar to that previously, you know, and I didn't know in the, from the past, I've done some things that when I sit back and think about it now, I'm like, I can't believe I did that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. was that me? Mm -hmm. But, and how I accepted was I didn't know who Christ was back then, like mm -hmm. I know his word now. Mm -hmm. And it's a part of growing. You live and you learn, and That's then it. what happens to you mm -hmm. it, it, whether it's good or bad, it can be used to edify the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because what you've been through or how, whatever happened in the past, mm -hmm. there is somebody else mm -hmm. similar right. to that situation. And you can be that testimony and say, hey, I was there, but I'm here now. That's it. You know, you can come from this, you can go to this right yes, here. Yes. So don't look at it as, mm -hmm. I can't get over it. Oh my God, woe is me. And, and you let that hang mm -hmm. over your head. You, you pray on it. Mm -hmm. You say, if I forgive yourself mm -hmm. and you move on. Mm -hmm. Because that's a testimony to help somebody else. And when you Amen. talk about forgiveness, you're really mm. talking about love. Yes. You have to forgive someone, yes. you have to love yourself, and yes. then love them enough to forgive yes. them. Yes. And I know it's hard. I'm not saying mm. that it's easy. I'm not saying mm. that there's not going to be a spirit within you sometime to want to get back yes. at them, want to, you know, mm. lash out and yes. to be mm. angry. But Sister Kadita, mm. we have to recognize, and I want you to mm. speak about this, how we're dealing with people nowadays with that have this same mental illness, mm. because that's all that yes. the, the brother had. It, yes. it was mental illness that he had to deal with pulling her in, mm -hmm. tricking her, making her think that, oh, I'm sick, take mm -hmm. care of me. Talk mm -hmm. about how we have to over, be able to be overcomers, recognizing that we're going to be dealing with all sorts of people. And in dealing with all sorts of people, certain people may do things to us that we mm -hmm. would have never done to ourselves mm -hmm. or never allow ourselves let, let happen to us. Mm -hmm. How do we get over it? How do we get 
past it? How do we move on? And how important is God in that whole equation? Oh my God, that's an awesome question. I mean, you can't do none of this if it just comes to go back to the word. You can't do none of this if you're not seeking after God. I mean, you gotta start somewhere. You can't depend on your mom or your cousin and none of these people go to church none they don't read the Bible they don't go to Sunday school they got a house full of books ain't never open them you just can't depend you got to first seek after the Lord once once I started getting to know the Lord myself first thing he's gonna show you is yourself Amen. and once God starts showing you who you are and showing you what you need to straighten up at then you know when you face those people that get those once had those same spirits that you had, you know how to overcome it. You know how to say, well, you know what? Ain't no need of me slashing out on her because I used to do that too. Like Angela said, I'm just going to pray for her because if we can't do nothing else for them, we can pray for them. I tell my children all the time, I tell them, I say, some people may not have nobody praying for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people may just be out here so I try to cover the whole world. Girl, you know, yeah, you're can. praying for yeah. you, whoever watching, you know, right? <laughs> you know, and, and and I just uh thank God that how he, you know, like I said, once he show you who you are, and you know when you see those spiritual uh, demons or whatever you want to call them, you know to not to react to them because you didn't want nobody to come at you lashing at you. Mm -hmm. You don't want nobody coming at you going off on you just because you having a bad day. Some of us had some bad experiences is a coming up as a child. Sure. Some of us didn't have no moms and dads. Uh, Tamar, she went through all this with her, uh, her uh, brothers. brothers and stuff. I mean, all that stuff, that's tra traumatic. You know, to be going through stuff that you didn't ask for. We asked for this stuff. That, you know, these parents, these boyfriend, girlfriend get together. They ask, these babies, they ask to come into this world. God want us to be husband and wife, not boyfriend and girlfriend. We starting our wrong right there, okay. you know. Come bringing this baby into this world. He, now he don't, daddy don't move on, or mama don't move on. And 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 what I just believe that once we, you know, start uh, recognizing our own self, recognizing ourselves in the word, and not only just recognizing it, but you know, asking for forgiveness, we'll be able to forgive others. We'll be able to treat them with more kindness. We'll be able to show more love with them, and and we all can grow at the same time. You speaking mm -hmm. awesome words when you say mm -hmm. that it's just so many things going on mm -hmm. in this world that we have to recognize that we can fix. That's right. We have power. Mm -hmm. and, we, and sometimes mm -hmm. we're in a situation now where people feel powerless. Yes. And in the midst of being powerless, mm -hmm. they do things. They yes. act out. They just yes. do anything that comes yes. to the top of their heads. And one thing about Tamar that we have to make sure that we bring about, she was an innocent victim to mm -hmm. this. She just had a good heart mm -hmm. and wanted to do the right thing. So many people have good hearts. Mm -hmm. One to do the right thing mm -hmm. are being used in society, are being walked on. These things with TikTok going on and, mm -hmm. and people coming up with these challenges yes, and stuff like yes. that. These kids are being <laughs> able to hear this and go out there and just do anything that they tell people to do. And to talk about how important it is that you bring your child into church, the least if they don't hear it at home, they need to hear it in church. Somebody need to tell folks yes. that's not right. That's Someone it. needed to tell Amnon that's not right. Don't mm -hmm. do that. You need, David didn't chastise those kids enough. David didn't stay on them boys enough. Talk about how important it is as parents we raise our children, bring them in the house of the Lord, let the word continue to raise them even the more. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. And it's, it's very important whether children yes. know it or not, yes. you know, and if I had started off mm -hmm. in the church mm -hmm. and I would have known this is what my kid was supposed to be, you know, mm -hmm. I let them come with me. Mm -hmm. And as my son got older, he kind of drew back and you have to, I, I don't know, maybe because of the situation I've seen, okay, that you just have to, you don't want to push them so hard to the point where it turns them away, right. you know, but we all need that covering, yes, you know, yes, yes. and they don't understand it at that point, but it is, it is, it is so critical to bring your children yes. and to teach them the word of God mm. because when you think about it, the parent, when you know better, you are responsible anyway. Exactly. Because see, you didn't do it. That's you didn't it. chastise them children. You didn't discipline mm -hmm. them. You didn't teach them about the world. You kept letting this go mm -hmm. on. And I had to deal with some personal issues 
like that myself. I had to ask God before I could even get on them, show me my fault. Because somewhere I done mm -hmm. slacked, I done did something mm -hmm. wrong to let it get to this point. Mm -hmm. So when you see what's wrong, like you, Cornita said, mm -hmm. he will show you yourself first. Yes, thank so you, when he showed me who you, I was Lord. and what I was doing, and I was like, you know, people say all the time, mm -hmm. kids don't come with instructions, <laughs> this, this, and that. Yeah. I used to say that all the time. But when you think about it, it's discipline, it's in the Bible. Yes, you know, yes. it's a way to train your child. Yes, yes. You, it might not be specifically to say your child's name, but <laughs> it's a child. You know, so he's giving those instructions. So I was like, I got to fall back Glory. to this word. Yes, I got to do exactly what thus said the Lord. Yes, Lord. Because see, at the end of the day, we say, Angela, do you do the? Yes. I got it. I'm held accountable for that. Because yes. I didn't open my mouth. My I didn't do my this. And I, and I don't want to be responsible for that. Yes. So I got to do my part. My goodness. You spoke awesome. so much about it's that. Awesome. Just saying, you know, and I want you to know, understand, like you said, you, mm -hmm. you didn't grow up or didn't start off the, the you, way. Lord. But it doesn't matter where you start you, off. Lord. The point is start. Yes. yes. You know, yes. you start, you brought Thank them. You, Lord. They came. Yes. They yes. Yes. And you'll be surprised how much he still remembers. Mm -hmm. How much you fall back on mm -hmm. and say, train up a child in the way in which he should go. Yes. And he will not depart. It's in there. It's yes. in there. Yes. And we have to remind ourselves, it's mm -hmm. in there. Even if your child's mm -hmm. not in the church, mm -hmm. not praising God, not doing everything that he's supposed to do right now, doesn't mean mm -hmm. that he's not going to ever come back to it. Yes. Right. Sister Cornita, talk Lord. about it because you have a mm -hmm. couple boys here that are mm -hmm. in the church. You bring your grandbabies mm -hmm. who are our <laughs> worship leaders. Oh my goodness. And uh, we love them. Talk about how important it is yes. that you don't allow your children to make the mistakes that you made. Okay. One thing I've heard Pastor Kind of preach about a while back. I don't know exactly when, but it's I'm growing in the Lord. Amen. So why should my children grow in the Lord? I didn't grow in the Lord coming up as a child. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't meet the Lord until later on. He already knew who I was mm -hmm. before I was born, mm -hmm. but I didn't know him. But when I look at my children, like Angela said, I'm responsible for them. I'm responsible for them getting to know the Lord. The earlier, the better. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether they come this Sunday, don't come this Sunday, now I got grandbabies. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, somebody got to show them. Somebody got to begin somewhere. And so I think that, you know, if you're going to grow, why not the whole family? Mm -hmm. Who want to go back home and you don't get all this word from the Lord and you go back home and face these demons? Mm -hmm. These demons, they ain't in the word. They don't know nothing. They ain't trying to grow. ain't trying to have nothing. But here you is full of fire, stirred up, ready for the gift, and you got to go back home to these demons. Uh -huh, we all going to come to church together. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. You got to get rid of this right now. This is what I got to do. It's either me or that demon, and I decide to have that demon to flee. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking about that. And now it's important that we recognize you all, that we all have to deal with it. And, and we start talking about demonic spirits. We're going to be here another yes, 30 minutes. Yeah. So we don't want to do that. Yes. But we do have to touch on the fact that de demonic spirits look for a host, yes. meaning a body yes. in which to sit in. Yes. And if we are not in tune with God, mm -hmm. that the, the spirit will fall into the body of your children. He will fall into the body of your spouse. Mm -hmm. You fall into your body, your grandbabies. Yes. It does not matter. Yes. So what we have to do is gird up the children yes, so they'll be able yes, to Lord. fight that demon that's yes, trying Lord. to attack them. That's one thing mm -hmm. that David failed when he did mm -hmm. not allow himself to be healed because he was always a man that chased after God's heart. Exactly. But his children fell to the wickedness of him. Mm -hmm. You know, God. So that's why we got to clean up ourselves yes, so we don't bring that wickedness unto our children. Yes, then once we try to clean up ourselves and don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. ain't nobody going to be spotless because only sure. one walks worthy. Right. And we're talking about the women of, of that were in his lineage mm -hmm. that are, that have the good things in Ruth mm -hmm. and some things that they had to deal with, mm -hmm. like in Tamar, all within the lineage of Christ mm -hmm. to let us know that we come from people like Ruth. We come from people yes. that have been molested like yes. Tamar. But we too can live. We can go higher. We can have more. All we got to do is live in Christ. God is awesome. I thank you both for thank being you. so thank awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Have thank a great you. night. Put your hands together.